Jamie, Jamie Penrith, why do you think electric shock collars have a, a role to play still? If I can just just state my position, our yep. position of the you know Association of Responsible Dog Owners, where we stand, we are totally and utterly welfare focused. I'm here by for passion. I, I'm not here to try and defend a right or an ability to abuse an animal, to cause pain, to deliver 6,000 volts for 11 seconds as per the Dogs Trust cartoon, which was massively destroyed in terms of comments for its inaccuracy in the way that it was portrayed. But the, the point is, Matthew, is that there's a massive misunderstanding here with regards to what electronic training collars are, as put across by, you know, they cause pain, and they must cause pain in order for them to work. Now, if you're looking in a scientific sense, you're looking at positive punishment punishment, which would be the thing that suits that argument. Negative reinforcement is basically where an app a pressure is applied, needn't be painful, but need to be something that the animal would r sooner rid itself off of in order to perform a behaviour, a desirable behaviour. And negative reinforcement is no worse or better than positive reinforcement. They strengthen behaviours. So the primary use of a remote training collar is to strengthen a desired behaviour on top of an existing foundation of positive reinforcement reward-based training to get the strongest, most reliable, most legally compliable yeah, dog good, that you yeah, possibly can. Point. And where I live, I'm, I live rurally, I've lived rurally all of my life, and where we're talking about livestock killing and it could do this and it could do that, listen, this is happening in its tens of thousands. Livestock are being destroyed needlessly, tens of thousands of them. It's costing over 1.3 million a year to farmers, their livelihoods, you know, being decimated. And the argument that we always come back to is keep the dog on a lead. 89% of dogs in one force study, the dogs weren't on a lead because the owner was nowhere present. The dogs had escaped and decided to chase. And it's that that needs addressing, the desire. You can still restrain, but should that restraint fail, as happened with me a couple of days ago with a person who I was speaking to and their dog shot off with a lead trailing behind it, there needs to be no desire in that dog to chase or kill life.